All right, this week we had on Andy Dane Carter. Andy talks about how he sells over $100 million a year in real estate, how he built a massive social media following, the importance of gift giving, and this YouTube hack that I've never heard of before that is absolutely genius. The Broke Agent presents Over Ask Podcast. Welcome to another episode of Over Ask. Today, Eric, we have a real estate titan on the on the episode. We've this is our first real estate titan, actually. Uh, also, best-selling author of 100 Doors. We're going to get right into that. Keynote speaker, like I said, real estate titan. Mr. A.D.C., Andy Dane Carter, is on the program. Andy, thanks so much for coming on. 100%, gentlemen. Thanks for having me. Love your guys' stuff. It's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, likewise, we love your stuff. So, Andy... Nice. We always do this to start off for people who may not know you, which I think is few and far between in our industry at this point. But for people who may not know you, can you know who is Andy Dane Carter? Sure. Um, so, like, I'm just a guy from Long Beach. Absolutely loves this space of real estate. And like a quick little backstory is I was raised super poor by a single mom. We had nothing. I actually started working when I was 12 and we used to live in like this teeny tiny apartment. We didn't have a refrigerator. We had a cooler, um, horrible student. I got D's and F's severely dyslexic. I've got like just about nine of 10 things that you're going to get really bad grades your whole life. I've got severe ADD. I've got all these things that I was kind of told are going to be a problem and they're actually superpowers in the business world. But for me, it was just a whole lot of that. I've been in a lot of different industries. I was one of the youngest wine sommeliers in the country at 21 years old, was huge in like the restaurant space, got burnout, got real fat and decided to just get like, you know, super clear and healthy and did that. And then I stumbled into real estate like most people do 2008 when everybody was leaving. And they're like, you're an idiot. The whole market's burning. And what's the wine guy going to do in real estate? I was like, you'll see. And I kind of went to town. Were there any transferable skills from being a sommelier to being a real estate agent besides being able to consume copious amounts of alcohol? Yeah. So that was uh, a huge plus for sure. But it's uh, it's so easy to go from being like a server, like something to do with that space straight into real estate. The stuff is all like hospitality based and it's all like, you know, like putting like together these huge problems. And it's I use this stuff all day, every day. You know, but yes, for sure. There's tons of that stuff that basically just transfers into service, customer service, and just working and then getting wasted. Yeah. <laughs> what, what gravity, we've had a couple people on this, on this podcast who got into the business 2008. What do you, what was, what was your mindset behind that? Did you know, what, do you, did you know the severity of what was going on or how no did clue. that, how'd you stumble upon it? Yeah. Super good question. No clue whatsoever. It wasn't anything where I was like, I'm super smart. It was, I was so sick and tired of this life that I was living. And I was just tired of working for like corporate America, this huge sales team. And I was just over it. I was about 60 pounds overweight. I was this big fat dude. I'm going to show you guys pictures later. It's hilarious. My face looks like it's this big. And I've got on this sweet hat trying to look not fat and it made it worse. But <laughs> it's this thing where I was like, all right, like it's time for me just to hit pause on my life. And I was in this like suit every day and I was this executive and this fancy wine salesman guy and I was just burnt out and super unhappy. So I hit pause for a month and took a month off and I got so happy that I'm like, I'm never going back to that job. So I started teaching yoga and racing triathlons. Um, and that's what I did for a year and a half. I didn't work. I that's a yeah, yeah, it was a it was a crazy crazy transition. <laughs> I, no, it was insane, and it's kind of how my brain's like you know built. I've got gear one and six. I don't like really have those gears in the middle. All my friends and family thought I'd lost my mind. They're like, he's wearing shorts every day, and he's teaching yoga for twenty bucks a class, and he's literally riding his bike for six hours a day. What it? He's it's over for Andy. And then my buddy at the time, he's, he's done. yeah, he's over. He's completely lost it for sure this time. Yeah. And, uh, it was a super good buddy of mine. He, um, he smokes a lot of weed. He I, like burnt his house down in Naples. So he had to go live somewhere. So he was actually living with me 
and he was flipping houses and he was making a ton of money. And I'm like, what is this thing? He's like, dude, you'd be so good at this. Why don't you just get your real estate license? You can still do all of your like hippie yoga stuff and ride your bike all day. And you can make like whatever, like a hundred grand a year on the side, whatever. And I was like, all right. So I literally went to my backyard and went into like a deep meditation was like, should I get into real estate? And I got a yes. I went into my computer and I signed up for my real estate license in California. And then I went straight into flipping houses about six months later. Okay. Just so we're clear, you got your real estate license because your friend who smokes a lot of weed and burnt his house down told you to. <laughs> yes, 100%. That's, that, that, your life's a movie. You, like, you yeah. should be pitching this to... 100%. Well, here's insane. the funny part is I literally walked away from this amazing opportunity to go back into corporate America, have a huge sales team and make 400 grand a year. And instead I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna keep teaching yoga and I'm gonna try this real estate thing. And again, my family's like, that's it, it's over. He's, that's, it's a wrap for him. I like how you said you're, you you could make a hundred thousand bucks on the side. I think that's kind of the mindset a lot of agents go in with is that like, <laughs> oh, I'm just gonna sell homes on the side. And obviously we know that doesn't work. No, um, at all. So, so p- for people listening at home, Andy Dan Carter does hundreds of millions a year, right? So this is this was an incredible decision that you came to in that meditation, right? Like, what are what are your sales right now? Aren't you, aren't you at like a hundred, two hundred million, possibly more? Yeah, we should do somewhere around like 130, 140 million this year. Um, and what's crazy is it was about three years ago now where I was like, I'm going to create a real estate team and I'm going to sell it because I was at a Tom Ferry summit speaking on real estate. Um, and I'm like, I could probably do this. I was so tired of the space of investing in syndications and multifamily. I was like, I'm just going to go into residential, same stupid mindset. Oh, I'm just going to make some money on the side so I can buy more properties because I was burnt out. And I went from doing 5 million the first year to like 42 million. And then we did 102 million last year. And it's, it's crazy business. 5 million to 42 million. Yeah. How did you make that jump from 5 million to 42 million? Yeah. Cause I wasn't, it, it was like, I wasn't paying attention to it at all. I would like list a couple houses for friends that would call me. And then I was like, this is kind of fun. And it's still super new to me. I love doing open houses. I love like, you know, all the stuff that you would like love to do as like a new agent and just kind of grind. I, I love all that shit. So, so you went from how, how 5 million to 42 from... million to 130 million. So a tremendous amount of marketing. So the, blessing was this superpower that we had for like print marketing and digital marketing and all this like stuff that we did for years for investors. It was the same ship. I just basically pointed it towards this thing and I changed my entire brand. Everybody knew me as like the real estate investor guy. And then now I've got like my face on these like, you know, signs and listing and I'm like, I'm going to come list your house. So I just went completely, completely all in on it. And I have friends of mine, they're like, we didn't even think you did that. So it was, it was literally just like me just kind of sharing with people, like we have like a traditional brokerage and we can help you. We can help you buy and sell and we can help you invest. From a branding standpoint, does being in Huffington Post, Forbes, (laughs) having that blue check mark, does that, does that help? I mean, I, I don't know if it will, you know, actually physically get you business, but just from a brand outside looking in, do you think that helps people kind of gravitate towards you to use you as their, their agent? 100%. It was the hardest thing that I've done in business was to get that little blue check mark on Instagram. I tried for a year straight. I got told, I don't know how many times nobody wants to be you. Like, I mean, they're, they are brutal. And I, I was like, all right, well, how do I get it? They're like, you need to be somebody who looks like they're famous online. And I was like, okay, I'm going to go be famous online. So then it was the perfect time because we actually launched the book. It did really well. And I got a lot of press on that. And then it was so much easier. But what was crazy is as soon as I started to send people messages with that dumb little blue check mark, everybody responded. It was like, it was crazy. It was, it was almost four years ago now, but it was like, 
instant credibility. It was so easy to book people for the podcast after that. They're like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll just book it tomorrow. And I was like, I've been trying to get a hold of you for a year. And you've had some monster That's guests awesome. on the podcast that we want to get into. So h- how did you get on the Huffington Post and Forbes? Because I think a lot of agents do want that press. And you did write a book. So I'm sure that had something to do with it. But like, how, how did you or your PR team get actually published in these um, large outlets? Yeah, so it's super important to have a strategic plan. Like, just like marketing and branding and advertising, like, you need to have a PR team or like at least something. And so like, I kind of started this whole journey. I didn't know anything. I didn't know a thing. And this dude kept falling into my feed over and over again. He's screaming and cussing and he likes wine. And he's from New York. And this dude's Gary V. And I was like, oh, I can fucking jam with this guy. I like his vibe. And this is six years ago now. And I'm like, how do I get a meeting with him? They're like, oh, it's impossible. And I was like, oh, okay, I got it. So I paid 10 grand and I got a meeting with Gary and his team. I fly out to New York with my film and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but it seems like this is where the market's going. And my biggest fear, no one knows who I am. I don't have a website. I don't like, I've got like 300 followers on Facebook. I don't know how this whole world works. And I spent hours with him and his team and left there with a clear plan. And I was like, okay, I just do it everywhere. I have a podcast and a YouTube and I went full gas. So there was a PR team that I hired of six people and there was a marketing team of eight and I didn't know what I was doing. I just hired everybody to kind of do it for me. And I'm like, I need help with this. So, but it's important to just like, to just do so much. I was posting five times a day and cutting stuff up and the team was everywhere. And then the whole thing for me was like the book. I was like, now I'm the expert in my industry. Now I'm the expert in my field and I'm trying to give back to them. Like, And then as soon as you're in Forbes, it's really easy to get on all the other platforms and then stuff starts getting picked up. Here was the hack that the PR team did that was amazing. Everything that was public facing had my Instagram handle, had it in a hyperlink that was on everything. So if you saw me, you could just click that and go follow me. I mean, it was insane, the growth after that. That's genius. That is genius. Getting a a meeting with Gary Vee is I the know. goal of like all of us basically and it sounds like you got in super early because ten thousand dollars i bet that number now is a quarter million dollars or more to even sit down and have a meeting with him was it just your team and him and him like coaching you for an hour about digital marketing like how did that go yes and so then it was the uh, like first day and the first ever i'm um, like daily i uh, like deep dive thing where like you could pay to basically like, so it was that whole like, you know, thing in the first time he was, he was talking about it on a podcast he was doing with Tony Robbins and I was driving. He's like, so here's what I'm thinking about doing. I literally pulled over and started sending him messages and started DMing like all the people uh, that like I knew. And as soon as I went there though, everybody was so cool. And now I'm friends with all of them. Like I'm literally like friends with the, CMO of Vayner and I can like, you know, shoot the messages. But the smartest thing that I did is I show up with a 19, I think it was 58 Jets Super Bowl helmet signed by all the players. And then I gave it to him and I filmed it all. And he was like, Hey, that was really cool of you and this and that. And then as soon as I left New York, sent these gifts to every single person that I talked to. And then I got their email and then I've stayed in contact with them for years. And they're just amazing people over there. The gift giving is uh, real. <laughs> it, it, it is real. I mean, Eric, we don't do that enough. Andy, what do you like? We're gonna send. We're gonna send you a gift from yeah. over ask after this. <laughs> what you want a want a, a football helmet? No, I'm or, good. You want a mug? So here's what I sent. Right, because this is like a weird gift that you're probably not gonna get. It's this little stand. And like a crystal. So the crystal sits on the stand. So then you put it on your desk or something. And now it's at their desk. And now they kind of reminded of me. And then it was this weird thing that worked. I had these things like it was a huge pain in the butt to get them all and then just box them up. But it worked really well. And now I'm like, you know, friends with all of them. Matt, Matt, actually, after um, the Tom Ferry Summit last year, I sent 1-800-Flowers, which I realized was a hack move 
one eight hundred flowers is just like a ridiculous company, but I wanted to send flowers to like Boomtown, our sponsor, and send like cigars and send snacks and stuff to like Byron's team and everybody who kind of hosted us. And then I realized that it was a moron move to send it from one eight hundred flowers because it's not like personal at all, and it just looks kind of ridiculous having a one eight hundred flowers thing in the mailer. Yeah. But the gift it's like giving bringing right someone. Now, yeah, it's like bringing someone boxed wine. Exactly. It's I mean, like, it's like bringing a box Andy of Cracker boxed Jacks. wine. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Like, but we, so we just had a we had Johnny <laughs> drinks on a Byron show, and Byron brought a twenty thousand dollar bottle of Poppy Pappy Van Winkle or Poppy Van Winkle, however you pronounce it, mm-hmm. and they were so excited about it. Like we, he gave it to him, and that just like cemented the relationship. So I think. There is a really important takeaway here, like whether you leave a listing appointment or you meet with a buyer consultation or something like sending them something very personal is such a different touch than following up with like emails and mailers and stuff like that. It's it is so important to go on Facebook or Instagram, look up your clients like before a listing, look up buyers like it's I mean, there's it's so easy to get the data. And like speaking of Gary V. He has an old video out there where like he's kind of given a pitch at like uh, like some kind of retail shop and he's like here's what i did is somebody called in to buy like a, a like it was like a 200 hundred dollar case of wine from wine library he sent him like a signed jersey by somebody and then it's like like he just kept going on and on and on about this and he's like if you sent me like a jets hat he goes that matters to me because it means that like you took the time to like really kind of pay attention and that goes a long way and he's i mean he's way up the food chain but that shit really really matters to your like you to them to our clients and it's a simple little gesture that like you took time to give a shit that's part of our job and i think a lot of people forget that even with closing gifts people i think feel obligated to give a closing gift but don't actually understand what the gift entails and what it's actually all about. Like I'll see a lot of people on Facebook groups be like, Hey, like I'm going to get my clients like a nest cam and it's like, okay, that's fine. But like part of our job is to pull out, you know, things about our clients. What do they like? That's why I've always said this. I wear so many band shirts and I'll wear Yankees hats and stuff that can just start conversations. And I've started so many conversations that way. Oh, I love Nirvana. Perfect. Okay. You love Nirvana. That's going in my closing gift to you. And they, like you said, they remember that shit. Dude, it's so smart and it's such low hanging fruit. It doesn't take any really effort extra to be like, oh yeah, they like candles or like, like, you know, whatever. And so like, we have like a signature candle that we send out with our logos and stuff on it. And it's this thing that we have done by this like unbelievable company here in Long Beach. And it's all handmade and hand poured, but now it's branded to us. And now the client's stoked. And it's just something different, you know, than like a bottle of like Vuv Clicquot that you got from Costco. It's like, hey, we closed. Congratulations. Like, That's what I've given to the eight sales that I've done in my career. Literally, I go I go straight to uh, BevMo, pick up yeah. a bottle of Smirnoff, write yeah. a nice letter. But, right. you know, Here, let's get that, that is behind me yeah, now. That's why, but, he doesn't, uh, that's why he doesn't do any sales anymore. <laughs> exactly. Um, the, the bad closing so. gifts. What do you give for closing <laughs> gifts, Andy? So it's like a not really, candles. It's That's a, for like Popeyes, right? Well, it's like a really cool, you, like you know, box we have. It's black and it's branded to us. And you open it up, and it's got a really high end bottle of this Blanco tequila that like we invested in. And I love the brand, love tequila, and that's like a hundred dollars a bottle. And there's a cutting board that's in there that's uh, like stamped with like our signature and logo. And there's a Classic. signature candle. And there's usually like some kind of gift card for like a hundred or 200 bucks to like some kind of local restaurant to like the zone that we closed at. And then it's just this really cool box and it's black and we give it to them and they're, and they're pumped. That's it's just a cool little gift. That's sick. I know I need to get, I mean, I have pretty good closing gifts. I will, you know, I'm not going to say, but sometimes I really go above and beyond. I don't really get that many gifts. I'm kind of pissed at my clients for that. I feel like they should, give me a lot more fucking gifts than like I do. <laughs> Why? I, sh- I really shouldn't even be giving them gifts. I mean, I gave them the gift of a fucking That's house, right. you know, That's but right. you know, I did my job, but uh, no, I feel like I should get a couple more gifts personally, but that's neither here nor there. It's not always about me, you know? Um, Andy, 100 doors. 
What can you tell us about this? Yeah. Very catchy name. Yeah, thank you. So it's a book Great name. that like I was basically trying to get out there because no one knows that you could buy a duplex for 3.5% down. No one knows about house hacking. You can buy a duplex, triplex, or fourplex, live in one of the units, rent out the rest of the property to cover 60, 70, 90, 100% of the mortgage, and then you live for free. And for me, it was so important to get this shit out there because one, no one talks about it. It's not taught in school, but that would have changed like my life. We were poor and my mom could have for sure, like she could have figured something out, right? Like over a few years and like, here's the plan for five years, we're going to buy a duplex and we're going to put this much down. I mean, a $700,000 duplex, it's like twenty six, twenty seven thousand $27,000 down and like, you're in and now you're in an asset and then it goes up. And then the hack that I love the most is if you like, you just have your real estate license, you're going to make 2.5% commission because you're going to represent yourself as the buyer. So now you got to come up with 1%, which is seven grand. I don't care who you are. If you can't save seven grand, you just shouldn't be like around. You know what I mean? Like you got a problem, (laughs) but like, (laughs) <laughs> like it's so easy to save seven thousand dollars over like ten years. It's like a dollar. So what everyone should just everyone yeah. should just be dead who doesn't yeah. have seven thousand dollars. Absolutely, for sure. Right. No, if you're listening to this, shit. throw it a like. Yeah. If you uh, have no. more than seven thousand dollars, it's this whole years. concept around I can't. Oh, I can't. I'm like you spend like twenty grand a year in Starbucks, but you can't save seven G's over ten years to like help your family. Like you're. A, you're a scumbag. So for me, it's these like choices. And then you have this piece of real estate that goes from like 700 to a million. And now you got 300 K in equity and you're still living for free. And if you're in your twenties, like it's like, Oh, I couldn't possibly like, you know, do that. Cause I don't want to be somewhere. It's like, so you rent it out and you could rent out all the rooms and travel the world and like, you know, live from your laptop and run your media company, whatever the hell you're doing. And so the book is basically just like to me. No, dude, you're good. I, I was like, I was like, there's so many ways to do right it. At me. I, I was looking straight into your soul. I was like, you should buy some shit. Come on. It's, but it's this like, it's a, it's a super thin book. It's a hundred pages. It, it'll maybe take you two hours to read. And there's pictures because I read like crap. I spoke the book into Rev over seven days. I didn't type, I'm a terrible writer. I spoke it into a software, it was transcripted. I sent it to the publisher. They made their little tweaks on it and I put it out to the market. I didn't like, oh, it took me like years to write my book. I just like, you know, spoke the thing into my phone and that's it, put it out. Did you call it a hundred doors because it's a hundred pages? No, so the plan is as soon as you get to a hundred doors, you should be making roughly around $100,000 in passive income per month or per year, kind of depending on your thing. But that's a tremendous amount of money to make for doing nothing. Like you're just going to own these assets and you're going to make a lot of money. So it's it's this whole kind of play on words where it's like, all right, so it's 100 doors and you're going to make 100 grand a month in passive. That's $1.2 million a year for doing nothing. And you can live on that. Well. Send me the book. Yeah. No, I'll go buy it. Oh, no, I'll send you guys a box of them. You guys can give them out. I'll send you a ton of them. Yeah, I got a so box you literally of spoke... possible books. I can't have another box of books here. Andy, you you literally spoke that book into existence. Literally, yeah. that's the most literal way you've done that. You literally spoke it into a software, sent it to an editor, and said fucking deal with it from here. You are 100%. I'm a terrible (laughs) writer. I mean, off the charts bad. I'm like, there's no way this is going to work. And like, you know, like, I just basically talked this thing and I'm like, here we go. I have a book on the doors. Let's go. And it's a bestseller. Yeah, it sure is. Jesus, that's legit. Maybe I'm going to try that after this. I'm going to voice memo some shit. Send it to Eric. (laughs) Yeah, be like. Called 100 skits. Yeah, a hundred reels. <laughs> yeah, a hundred reels. A hundred reels. Yeah, for sure. That is not, not a bad idea. Of the Andy, same meme. we'll collab. Yeah, no, I love the collabs. It's fun. It, okay, love it. Now let's let's pivot a little here because you have an outstanding YouTube channel. Thank you. Um, is that where you would say now most of your business is coming from? So there's a lot that's coming from YouTube. So like I went 
really, really hard with YouTube about four years ago. And then it slowed down because I had this office um, that was absolutely beautiful, amazing. And I literally poured my like blood, sweat and tears into it. And then it burned down. So uh, it was super hard. What's it, with, yeah, what's with you and everything burning down? Burning around down around. Yeah, literally burnt did, out. Did your friend come and hang out at that office? Your, no, it was the... Pop it was the clown friend. that was next door. He owned this <laughs> stupid company and all of his guys that worked there would literally go upstairs into this area and smoke a bunch of weed. Well, they went up there, smoked a bunch of, like again, Long weed, Beach. right? Yeah, Long Beach, right? And so it was this fire. It was like 12 noon on a Friday. And I'm like, I smell smoke. And I fly into the podcast studio because I think the whole thing's burning down. And there was a kitchen there and like a full bathroom shower. Like it was this huge office. And I'm like, I smell smoke. And then I literally go out the back door and there's this huge fire that's on the roof right next door to me. And I was like, oh shit, that's a problem. So then I run in there, tell everybody to get out. Their building's on fire. And then the fire department, because there was so much stuff there, they cut a 30 foot trench to my building and pulled the fire to my building so they could, anyway, long story short, it could, I, I, like the whole property burned to the ground. I was on the news. It was terrible. Wait, they, so, they transitioned so you, the fire you, from one building to yours? Because there was so much fuel Jesus. in their fire, they didn't want it to get there and explode and burn down all the buildings. So they pulled it to my building. That was nice. It was like art studio. Pot, it was all clean and nice. And they could actually fight it as soon as it got pulled to my building. Thanks, guys. Those damn, those pot smokers. <laughs> hey, those pot. So I love weed. You, I smoke weed every you, night, but it's like, like I'm responsible. Well, here it's a different it's a different kind of uh, weed. That, like if you if you smell smoke and hear sublime, you're, you're fucked. fucked. It's over. You're done. Right? It's that. It's that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Something's going to the ground. One hundred percent. So, so the, did this fire <laughs> burn down your YouTube channel too? Where, so, so what, what, you said you started. Yeah. Hard sorry. So it completely down. burned okay. down. Like I was bummed. I mean, we lost hard drives. We lost all of our cameras. We lost the whole studio. And I, like. It was like a kick in the nuts. And I was like, look, I'm just going to take a break on the podcast. I'm going to take a break on the YouTube. And it was so crazy because it was right when I was about to start this whole thing with like a traditional real estate team and I was going to build it out. I was like, let me just focus on that and kind of see what happens. And then we circled back about a year ago and now we are full gas on YouTube and YouTube shorts is the new thing that we're going to like, you know, go really, really heavy on. Um, it's just a great platform. And I finally got my silver play button that i've been trying to get for five years so i was super pumped on congratulations. that congratulations thank you congrats yeah we're only congrats. ninety-three thousand what do you subscribers see? away from that so if you're watching this please hit the subscribe <laughs> button subscribe so we can get that and like hit the notification bell yeah, yeah exactly. subscribe and throw a like smash. on this video for god's sake <laughs> smash that subscribe button that's um, so hard for me what to do you say. see i absolutely hate that <laughs> <laughs> drives me nuts what what do you see in uh, youtube shorts because to me I keep saying this. I, I feel like mine is a little broken. It's, I'm not getting the views that I feel like uh, some other people are getting on YouTube Shorts. What What do you see? Is there like something that's going to really hit on YouTube Shorts, you think? So I'm hoping, but I have no idea. And so like the biggest thing is just like test it. And it was some shit that I got from Gary years ago. He's like, you got to test everything. I don't know. Test it. I'm like, you're one of the smartest guys in the whole industry. And like, that's your advice to me. I don't know. Test it. And he's like, that's real. Like, like you have to see what's going to work and not work. Um, but I have no idea. They have a lot of eyeballs and there's a lot of people going to the shorts and like the shorter format. And we saw it with reels like crazy. We've seen it with TikTok like crazy. And there's, there's a lot of noise on Instagram. I love Instagram. There's a lot of noise on YouTube too, but this whole thing with the shorts it's going to have some legs for, I don't know, 12 or 14 months. And I think we can jump on it and we can get ahead of some stuff. So I'm just trying to like, it's the same with you guys, right? Like, like this like thing is always evolving. It's always changing. They're always changing algorithms. So I don't have any idea. I'm just going to try it and see what happens. I can tell you what we've been well, doing. We've been doing clips from every podcast. We have a podcast every day. And then we take two of the best clips that performed well on Broke Agent Media or two of the best clips that performed well on that podcast and then throw it up that same day. And then we're also taking the clips that I'm doing on like Marketing Mondays where I'm talking about Instagram strategy. And some get 10 views, some get a few thousand views. It really is kind of a crapshoot. But a lot of it is about how you title 
the video. It has to be like this really popping searchable title. And that's so much more important on YouTube than it is on Instagram Reels and TikTok. Like the caption doesn't matter that much. It's starting to matter a little bit more on Instagram with SEO and everything. But for YouTube, having that title and having a good visual is like 80% of the game in terms of that clickability. 100%. And uh, you and I were chatting a little bit at uh, like Simon about the uh, like 24 hour live stream that's on YouTube. It's good. I was going to ask you about this. This is an incredible hack, everyone. Dude, this changed the game for us like back in December. It was this great company. Same thing. Following me on Instagram forever, sending me DMs. Hey, you know, would love to work with you. My entire DM is like full of that. Hey, like, you know, all this stuff. And I finally hopped on the phone with this guy and he's like, here's what we do. It's a 24 hour live stream. I'm like, I can't live stream for that. He's like, no shit. What you do is you take all of your content and you just stitch it together. And then you put it on YouTube as this 24 hour loop. And so it's all your videos that you've done. And it's just, I mean, it it's crazy. We rank on the first page every day. And like we've doubled our subscribers in six months. It's been crazy. So it pulls from all your older videos. Like, do you have to do any of that work? Or are they using some sort of software where it's like you upload a listing video and then it's playing that you upload a podcast and it starts playing that he did it all he goes you don't have to do anything except send me money i was like perfect that's the kind of business model i like he yeah. he did it all on the back end he becomes a, like some kind of admin or something on like the youtube channel i don't really do all this stuff so i don't like completely know but he just took the videos and he just drops it into some kind of software i'm assuming and then it just loops and runs and it's continuous and then it keeps going and then they switch it out from time to time but it's where it's like extremely visible now. Yeah, it's like Instagram, where if you're live on YouTube, that will pop up at the top of your YouTube scroll, like on your app. So that makes sense that so many more people are clicking on that and just subscribing from that. So that's a hack I've never heard before. When you told me that, I was enlightened by that. Because that's something that we could do. I mean, we have a show every single day. So we could just have it continuously looping. Yeah, it makes a it makes a big difference. I think here, like I'll just pull this thing up to see if I can show you guys the thumbnail real quick. But it's it's insane. Every time like we click the like YouTube thing, that's what pops up. I mean, it's every mm -hmm. time I touch YouTube, it's at the top of the screen. And then it's the same for like so many people. Like they're like, we're so tired of seeing your face every time we click YouTube. That's like, that's the best compliment I could get. I was right? gonna say, that's a good compliment right there. That's genius. It wasn't my idea. Absolutely I just genius. paid for it. That was, <laughs> wasn't me. Well, you could just act like it was your yeah, idea. I you completely know. invented it and I wrote the software. I'm, I'm the man. <laughs> but the thing is, um, what I think a lot of people, a lot of agents lose sight of, um, like we were talking YouTube shorts and everyone's always worried about, oh, is it a fad? Is it going to stay around? I don't think that matters. Like you've, we, we saw years ago, people build entire careers off of Vine that was around for what, one year, two years. Mm -hmm. We saw people build huge followings off Clubhouse, which has now seems to be a fad. It doesn't matter if it's a fad or not. I think, you know, if, if there's interest in it, jump on it, try the worst that can happen is okay, no, nothing, nothing happened. But you know, that's still a pretty good risk to take. Um, so I think and that it goes for for us as well, Eric, we just need to jump on kind of everything um there's a we're there's very a comfortable one, i know which one uh what's it called be real have you guys heard be about real. this no, but I'm gonna, yeah i'm gonna jump on it that's be real gonna... basically <laughs> be real basically pings your phone once or twice a day and you upload a photo of exactly what you're doing at that time so it's a front-facing camera and a camera you know, that faces normally, basically. So you just take your phone and click it. It'll say like, you know, nine o'clock and you click it and it's usually people at work. You're supposed to look ugly. It's not like a filter app. It's just kind of like an authentic app. And yeah. then everybody uploads it to the same feed and you can kind of see what your friends are doing. I don't know how this... Think of... Go ahead. Think of how much that's going to destroy agents. How many times the agents be like, yeah, sorry, I'm in a meeting right now. Exactly. Yeah, this is exactly. <laughs> they're on their Be Real app. <laughs> yeah, they're just <laughs> sitting in a bathtub or something or on the golf course. Yeah. yeah, this is not good for agents. I wonder, but there is something to it. Like uh, my fiance, Anne, is obsessed with it. And it's fun because you just 
you get to see your friends in a different light, especially with Instagram all being suggested posts and recommended. Now you're not really seeing what your friends are doing and you have to scroll through stories to actually see it. But for this app, you just see everybody uploads at the exact same time. You kind of drop everything. Like if I got a ping right now, I would just do this shows my face and then shows what's coming out of the camera too. So there might be something there with us down the road. Um, but it, it, it is always good to go get on these apps. Even if you think like, I'm not going to build the following on it, just like Matt was saying, because you, you will hone some sort of skill from this from clubhouse. Matt and I became better podcasters. We picked up subscribers from clubhouse because they heard us bantering, heard us talking shit to each other. We're like, I want to hear these guys in more long form. So even though like we didn't really build a huge following on clubhouse, we built subscribers, we built listener base. So get on everything basically, as we've been saying. Yeah. Well, it's going to work. Like, like it's going to work because your fiance, she's obsessed with it. There's probably a, a lot of people like that. And then it's going to work. Who cares if it works for a day or like, I don't know, 16 years. It, it doesn't really matter. You just want to be like exposed. And it's funny. I think it's going to be hilarious. There's going to be people doing, here's the thing with like, everybody's so lazy. They want to sit there on their phone and be entertained. And if there's something new to entertain them, they're going to do it. Be like, oh, this was so funny. Here's this guy I was doing at 920. Can you believe it? Like, you're literally taking away from your day. And then they'll be like, you know, sharing that stuff and the shareability and then sending messages. Oh, dude, you said you were at this and you're really like, it's all just, yeah. it's, it's the whole world now. Like, we want to be entertained constantly. Totally. And mainly in short form. Yes. I mean, yeah. there's just no attention spans it's anymore. Gone. Um, well, Andy, this was uh, this was very. I want to say some of my takeaways here because you really resonated with me early on in the episode when you're saying uh, you weren't a great student. I was not a good student at all. It actually seems to be more of a trend for uh, at least creators and real kind of agents. content creators and stuff. <laughs> yeah, real estate agents for sure. <laughs> Um, but it's cool to know, like, you know, you're a guy who, you know, wasn't privileged growing up. You came into this with nothing. You knew nobody. You were saying you wore, you wear board shorts. Uh, pretty sure you're like, all, you have a bunch of tattoos, which is, yeah. So <laughs> he's got it all. And you've, you're going to do 130 million, around 130 million this year. So it really doesn't matter. None of that. That's all smoke and mirrors. That shit doesn't matter. People fo spend way too much time focusing on, oh, well, I got to, you know, I'm going to go do this. But first, I got to get the right car. So, you know, I, I look a certain way. Or first, I got to get a new suit. Or first, I'm not going to door knock until I get my hair cut. I think at the end of the day, you just got to fucking go for it. So that was very, very cool. Resonated with me. I'm sure it's going to re resonate with a lot of others. Oh, nice, brother. Thank you. Eric, anything nice to say to me or Andy? No. He's I like, mean, I, he's I, like, I Andy, do you prefer Andy. do you prefer do you prefer Andy Dane Carter or ADC, ADC. or Andy or I've been calling. See, I, I never asked until the end of these episodes. Yeah, it's, it's and it's so funny because my wife this morning she was on the she was on the phone with this like really great guy. We go way back, incredible business partners of ours, and she's like, "Your husband's kind of like a celebrity in this world," and she's like. I know I got to hear this crap all the time from all these other people that I like, you know, meet, whatever. And she's like, here's the truth. If you call him Carter, you know him really well personally. If you call him like by his whole, like, you know, full name, you kind of, you might kind of know him. I'm just Andy. Like that's, that's who I am. And if it, it's, but there's this thing now where it's my full name, like that was strategic by the marketing team. I mean, you guys wouldn't believe three days of going through. Should I be Andy Dane, Andy Dane Carter, Andrew Dane Carter? I'm buying domains. I'm like, I don't know. And then like, like this one chick was like, that sounds really good. I was like, cool, let's do that then. So it's a, yeah, it's like a long way to explain it, but I'm just a regular dude who's super mellow and I just like to do real estate and have fun. Well, I think well, it was a brilliant yeah. marketing move. Andy Dane Carter. Yeah. It, it's very memorable. Even when we were going over the list for Bam Bash, I was on a Zoom with Jill and I, I said like, oh yeah, my friend Andy Dane Carter's on the list. She's like, 
does he need to have his middle name on everything or whatever she said. And I was just like, honestly, it's kind of sick. And then when you it's came a strong in, move. remember when you came in, she's like, oh, look, it's Andy Dane Carter. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it, it yeah. really like just engraves in your, in your brain. So now, a, a now what do you guys market. think? What do you guys think? Matthew Dean Leonetti. Dean's strong? a kind of sick middle name. That's a sick name. It's, Thank you. It's strong. Yeah. Here's the thing. Dean's really sick. You want people to talk shit. I want more people to talk shit. We have a massive budget now for multiple listing service fines because people narc me out or turn it in my marketing or driving around taking pictures of stuff. I'm making them mad because they like, you know, think I got this huge ego and I'm a dick and I'll, oh, I've got three names. They're, they're talking about me. It's working. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I always say, I always say, be a little polarizing because that, you know, it's better for someone to talk about you than not 100%. to. Um, well, I think we graduated from Andy Dane Carter to Andy. And now I, I think it's safe to say we're just going to go with I Carter love it. Perfect. at this point. I'll make my so. wife happy. She'll be stoked. <laughs> okay. Carter, where can the people awesome. follow you? Yeah, I'm super easy to find. You just basically type in my full name, Andy Dane Carter. I, there we go. That's what I'm, I wanted. Trying to get the TikTok account back. Uh, it was hacked um, when I was in Dallas with Tom Ferry, and it's like Cut a verified fire. account, and I and I can't get it back. But I'm on all the other platforms. I like Facebook and YouTube and Instagram and all that good stuff. Matt, I got one more thing actually. Okay. Spe- speaking of the Tom okay. Ferry, what was your major takeaway from that conference? So I I really liked the I like stuff on Thursday and. I really liked the speaker a lot. Um, he was he was really cool, and like I got to kind of do a lunch and learn with him. And he did this like crazy thing with like how you just like completely handle like tons and tons of problems and all these different objections. And he did it in a really really cool way, which was like extremely grounding. It was just great though. It is such a great community. Like it's so funny because so many people talk to me oh this and that and coaching it's expensive and, and i was like if you told me and i was talking to robert mack about this yesterday i was like and like he was kind of bringing this like you know stuff up if you told me that i still had to write those like huge checks every single month and there was no coaching but i got to stay within that community i would still do it like here's the thing with coaching that's just like cherry on like top, right? It's great. But I learned so much from you guys and following you guys and your guys' stuff. And what's great about that whole community is I can pick up the phone and be like, I'm shitting the bed. How do I fix this? And like 20 people will help me. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So that's my biggest takeaway you is that like, when you're shitting the bed, but yeah, yeah. No, I want to be like, mm. it's like, it is <laughs> exactly. such a great community that just really likes to help. And I, I just love that vibe. Love it. Yes. Well, Carter, 100 Doors is out now. Yes. Go get your copy. Yes. If uh, there's a building on fire around you, Stay maybe away. call contact Carter as well. He'll probably know what to do more than uh, <laughs> most of us. Uh, thanks so much for being on the episode. We really appreciate 100%, it. 100%, guys. Thank you much.